Hello, thank you so much for joining me for my 12 Sundays of Christmas series. My name is Sharon Rogers and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Wells, Maine. Today is day number 12 in the series, which means it's our final one for this year. But good news, I'm already planning for next year. But before I get ahead of myself, we do have to have a project for today. Now this gift and gift packaging series is all about creating something special for the recipient. And because we are so close to Christmas, there's no time to order other materials. So let's create something from product that you probably already have in your craft room. Now this particular project will serve you well beyond Christmas because this is a cash holder. And so there are lots of opportunities to give cash graduations, birthdays, etc. And although many people don't like to give cash, many people love to receive cash. And so the balance here is giving people something that they really want and can use, like cash, but doing it in a creative way that allows the recipient to know that you didn't just dial it in and, you know, take the easy way out by throwing cash there. Take some time and create a beautiful cash holder that will be a gift in itself and let that recipient know that you took the extra time. But let's see how quick and easy this is because although you will take time to create it, you won't take a lot of time. On the 12th Sunday of Christmas, Sharon shared with me a cash holder or a check holder. It has a belly band that you easily slide off, open to reveal a place for you to write a message to the recipient and tuck some cash in here. Let's see how easy this is to make. Let's begin by bringing in a piece of cherry cobbler cardstock. And we need a piece that is seven inches by seven inches. Makes it pretty easy since the dimensions match. And on one of the seven inch sides, which you can pick a side, uh, you're going to score at two inches and five inches. So two inches and five inches. And this forms the base of your gift card envelope. I'm gonna bring in my bone folder. Just make some nice crisp folds there. And now I need to decorate this. I'm bringing in the Shining Christmas Designer Series paper because I have plenty of that to use up. So I just need to pick the designs. Now these are single, no, they're not single-sided, they're double-sided designs. So I can keep that in mind. One of them is um, a shiny foil kind of side and one is a matte finish side. So you can just decide which one you like best. Hmm, I really do love the Argyle, but it's a little bit busier than I want, I think. And I love the Christmas trees. I think I will use the Christmas trees. And I'm gonna use the back side of the Christmas trees as well, because that's a fairly um, simple looking pattern. I don't want my patterns to compete. So you need to cut two pieces here and each piece needs to be one and three quarters by six and three quarters. Now I want, I want it to run the long way. So one and three quarters is what I'm gonna cut this at. Avoid the, uh, don't worry about that clink clink sound. So one and three quarters, I need two of those strips. So one and three quarters by six and three quarters. I'm 
All right. Let's set my paper trimmer aside here. We will need it in just a little bit. But we're going to put one of these prints right on the top here. And then we will print, put one of them on the bottom. So see how you don't want the prints to compete. This bottom one, I think, looks a little bit nicer if it's um, just um, a little less busy, a little less flashy. Let's go ahead and adhere those pieces on. Now, because one of these sides is um, a foil, you will want to, hold on, I gotta, gotta get my glue unstuck. Um, because one of these sides is a foil, it will take just a little bit longer to set up Just centering it in that area there. And I'm holding it pretty well with one hand because again, that's going to be a little bit slippery until it sets up. And then we will adhere the other side to the top. Now we're going to create a belly band to hold this closed. And with our belly band, we have a choice. We can either use this color. This piece is not, um, not long enough, I don't think. We can, uh, you know what, it is, it is long enough. So this is just one of the pieces that I had uh, cut off initially. And you're going to find the center of this. Now, it's um, easiest if you have a grid sheet, which I happen to have an older one right here. Uh, it doesn't have any numbers on it though. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in a ruler. Now, the traditional grid sheets that Stampin' Up! sells does have kind of a, a zero area. kind of starts in the middle and works its way out. Because my card is seven inches wide, that means it's three and a half inches on each side. So if I put that to three and a half, there's three and a half and there's three and a half. Now I'm just gonna find the center mark here and that's on the bottom that I wanna mark. So here's that bottom piece. I've centered it and I'm just gonna mark that right there so I know where the center is. I'm gonna cut a little semicircle with a hole punch that I have. This is not a necessary step, but it does give that finished look to it. And you can use any circle size that you want. This is just a, an old one inch circle punch that I have, and I'm centering it in there and punching. So now it just, it has that little finished look there. Now let's bring in some tear and tape. All right, I'm gonna get rid of this grid sheet because it just does not coordinate. We're gonna put in our tear and tape and We'll put this along the edge of that piece that we just punched. There's a little extra room here for the cache, so you don't have to worry about getting it exactly on the edge. I like to come in on just a, a hair, just so I make sure I don't have any adhesive sticking out that side. Did not come off, did it? There we go. And then we just will fold that down and we'll burnish that. Okay. To create our belly band, let's um, center this right here, roughly center it. And we're going to 
we're going to fold up and we're going to fold down. Now when you do that, make sure that the where they meet is squared up. And if you want to take it off and crease it nicely, you can. And so here we have our belly band. Now, some of you are saying, but it's closing in the front. You don't want it to close in the front. But yes, I do, because I want to hide this area where it joins together. But let's go ahead and create that belly band. And the easiest way to do that is to put a line of the tear and tape on this inside edge and a line of the tear and tape up here at the top inside. I guess you could say that this is the outside and that's the inside. And when you take these guys off, and I like to do it with, the, with it on the card because that will mean it's gonna be a little bit loose enough that I can, I can play with it a little bit later. Okay, so there's my belly band. You don't want it too tight because you do want to be able to put it on. Now, if you are going to give several bills in here, you need to make it looser. But my recommendation would be go to the bank and get a larger bill. They're more fun to get anyway. All right, so now let's decorate something for the front of this. I'm going to pull in a piece of basic white cardstock. And this sentiment is from a retired stamp set. I happen to have it laying here on my desk because it's one of my favorite sentiments to use. It says, may this be a Christmas to remember and cherish. You can absolutely use any sentiment you want. I'm going to stamp in my cherry cobbler. Give it a little bit of space. I'm going to use this hexagonal punch, which people had a chance to order as a sneak peek, but it is in an upcoming catalog that will be released January 4th. And see how perfect that looks on there. And if you think, um, you know, if, if this is a belly band that's a little bit too wide for you, obviously you could have cut it down. But I think the, the width of it is very nice because it, um, you know, this envelope is quite long in and of itself as well. Let's go ahead and attach this with some dimensionals. Those are my mini dimensionals. I don't want those. I just want to make sure I don't get too close to the edges here. I just want the part that's going to stick on the belly band. And there we go. There's a belly band, it slips right off and we can put some cash right in there. Now, if you would like to like an area to write a sentiment, you can certainly cut a piece of basic white that goes up here. For instance, let's go ahead and do that. So I think I have a piece that's just almost long enough. We can put it right there. This is a little bit um, narrower and uh, shorter than, than this piece down here. This happens to be one and a half by six and a half. So the border is just as, just double that that it was below. And that's simply because that's the piece I grabbed from where I just punched. That piece looked long enough to me, so I used it. And so you could write your own little sentiment right there. You can stamp something, you can just write something, you can do both of those things. And there we go. I 
hope you have enjoyed this series. Thank you so much for joining me. Just a couple of housekeeping rules as we end this year. I do have a stamp camp, an online stamp camp coming up December 26th through the 28th. Each day I will feature two projects using the Fluffiest Friends bundle. Not only that, but each day we will play a round of bingo for prizes. If you would like to register for that stamp camp, the link is in the description of the video and you can find that below. The deadline to register is Wednesday, December 20th, so don't delay. I hope you have the merriest of Christmases. I hope you can try to decompress a little bit from the hustle and bustle that leads up to it and just enjoy the time spent with family and friends. I will see you on Friday for my Friday Night Live. Have a good week, everyone.